Go on to the next item of business. Can I advise the Chamber the presiding officer has selected two urgent questions for answer today. The first one will be taken as the next item of business. The second one will be taken following the public petitions committee debate. As a consequence, decision time will be at 5.30 p.m. A revised business programme has been issued to all members. To the next item of business, which is an urgent question. Uh, can I call Marie Goujon to ask the question, please? Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether discussions have taken place with the UK Government regarding Scotland retaining regulatory alignment with the EU and effectively remaining in the single market. Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Scottish Government put forward proposals in December 2016 in its publication, Scotland's Place in Europe which set out our view that if Brexit was unavoidable, the UK as a whole should remain within the European single market and the customs union. And if the remainder of the UK chose not to do this, we set out a mechanism through which Scotland could continue to benefit from membership of the single market and the customs union. However, subsequently in her Lancaster House speech, the Prime Minister, without any consultation or forewarning, ruled out single market and customs union membership. Much of the damage and chaos that has been caused over the past year is a direct result of the red lines the Prime Minister set out then. After our proposals for Scottish membership were tabled at the JMC EN in January 2016, there were limited further discussions between officials in the UK and Scottish governments. Two months later, the UK dismissed the proposals as unworkable without any convincing reasons. Now, we fully support the Good Friday Agreement in all aspects, and we welcome the proposals of yesterday, which sought to ensure that there would be no return to a hard border in Northern Ireland, and also demonstrated that the principle of a differentiated approach, which we set out in December last year, was viable within the scope of the UK's future relationship with the EU. Whilst the detail remains unclear, the Irish government had been clear that it would facilitate free movement of people, goods and services across the border to Northern Ireland. On that basis, we understand that the deal provides for a dynamic regulatory compliance between Northern Ireland and the EU, a key now and in the future. It would also provide for an agreed form of dispute resolution, which could include the European Court of Justice. We will be pressing for further clarity on these and other issues as a matter of urgency. Of course, Presiding Officer Scotland did not vote to leave the EU. The best solution would be to stay. However, in the case of a continued move towards Brexit, there is overwhelming support in this Parliament and across the country to retain Scotland and the UK's place in the single market and customs union. I think, therefore, it's time for all of us, both here in Scotland and across the UK, at this crucial time, to speak out for what is in everybody's interest and reject a hard Brexit. It's time for Scotland to speak with one voice, and I would encourage all of those who realise that single market and customs union membership is vital to say so and to work to achieve it. Many I thank the Minister for that answer and given uh, discussion and debate over the past few days I don't think it's fair that it can be one rule for one uh, constituent part of the UK and another rule for everyone else. Now last year the UK government committed to full engagement with the Scottish government, the Welsh government and Northern Ireland uh, the executive on the UK's exit from the European Union. The four governments agreed to work together towards an agreed UK approach to the Brexit negotiations through the Joint Ministerial Committee. Does the Minister think that there has been full engagement with the Scottish Government on these latest developments or that we have a UK agreed approach? Minister. Well, Presiding Officer, we, we, we should stress at the outset that the situation in Northern Ireland, of course, uh, stands on its own and has its own history and its own need for uh, a solution that uh, respects, for example, the, the Good Friday Agreement and the great benefits that have been brought by that. But of course, that also stands alongside the single membership of the single market. It is membership of the single market that has allowed the, the border to be completely porous in the way it is, with 275 crossing points, I think. So uh, that having been said, quite clearly, we are endeavouring to work on solutions that have been uh, uh, made more difficult by the EU withdrawal bill, and we have been making progress on those. I think it is now a moot point what yesterday's chaos actually means, and that will have to be factored into the discussions that we are having. There is due to be a meeting of the Joint Ministerial Committee next Tuesday. Uh, and obviously we would hope at that meeting we could explore these issues, get some clarity about what the situation is, uh, and find a way to move forward. But it is very difficult to negotiate with people who seem to change their position uh, all the time and who do not inform others of that position. And what, of course, we saw yesterday was a chronic failure to keep everybody informed about what the situation was. And we ourselves have suffered over a period of time from not having the information that we required to have. 
maybe this will be an object lesson to the UK government. Maybe they will change. Mary Gujo. Thank you, Minister, for that answer. I, I would also like to ask the Minister what he th believes the consequences will be for jobs and living standards in Scotland if the UK is to leave the single market and the customs union, and in particular, what that will mean for rural constituencies such as mine of Angus North and Mearns. Minister. Well, presiding officer, I also represent a, a rural constituency, indeed, some might call it an extreme rural constituency of Argyll and Butte. And I am very worried, as all MSPs should be, about the effects of their constituencies, rural and urban, um, with, uh, if we were to leave the single market and the customs union. We have published material last year in Scotland's Place in Europe. We have published analysis and, uh, and other information over the last um, 12 months. Uh, just recently, we published our uh, uh, evidence to the Migration Advisory Committee, which puts, paints a very stark picture of the difficulties we will have if there are restrictions on migration. I think in all these circumstances, the best solution would, of course, be to stay within the EU. Uh, but it, the compromise solution, which you know, we put forward 12 months ago, and it seems uh, ever more relevant, uh, is to remain within the single market and the customs union. And it is something that has been widely supported across this chamber. And I'm very grateful for that. I think that's extremely important. Uh, and indeed, you know, I don't anticipate the questions from the Conservatives, but uh, I am mindful of the fact that uh, uh, just days after the vote, uh, Ruth Davidson said that retaining our place in the single market should be the overriding priority. Uh, and I don't think that has changed. And if this chamber were to speak with one voice on membership of the single market and the customs union, I think it would be very effective indeed. Uh, thank you. I have seven members wishing to ask questions. I'm going to stop this at 2.25. I have to move on to the topical question. I call so succinct questions, please, to allow Evelyn Jackson Carroll, followed by Lewis MacDonald. Uh, may I somewhat unexpectedly uh, agree with Marie Goujon's opening remarks? Scottish Conservatives believe if regulatory alignment in a number of specific areas is the requirement for a frictionless border, then the Prime Minister should conclude this must be on a UK-wide basis. Yesterday, the First Minister hastily took to Twitter to once again demand a separate break exit deal for Scotland. We know how this would benefit the SNP's political objectives, but can the Minister explain how separate arrangements for Scotland and England would be beneficial to the rest of us, given that trade with Britain is worth four times more to Scotland than the whole of the European Union? Minister. I'm going to be very constructive in my answers to Jackson Carlo, no matter how much he tempts me not to be. Um, the reality of the situation is that the position that the First Minister has laid out yesterday and today is exactly the same as the position we've had for the last year in, in this document, which I'm sure he has read, marked and inwardly digested, Scotland's place in Europe. Uh, and the position is this. Our preference is to stay in the EU. If that is not what is to happen, and I think the evidence for doing so is stronger and stronger, then a whole UK approach to staying within the single market and the custom union is what's required. That would be regulatory convergence or lack of regulatory divergence or continued uh, 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 observation of the acquis, call it what you will. And that it would be the best solution. Now, in the circumstances in which we are in today, that is also the best solution to resolve the difficulty that has arisen in Ireland and Northern Ireland, because it squares the circle. Uh, the, the impossibility of making one offer to Ireland and another offer to Northern Ireland. The only way out of that is to make sure that the whole of these islands are in the single market and the customs union. Now, if the Scottish Conservatives will support that, I think that would be a very considerable step forward. And they have supported it in the past because then that resolves the issue. Now, we also know that there can be no cherry picking of the single market. So the idea that is, appears to be uh, being floated at the moment in Downing Street, and there are so many ideas being floated in Downing Street, I'm surprised they're not underwater. But the reality of the situation is if, if they're trying to cherry pick, to take agriculture, for example, and to take uh, elements of trade and elements of uh, energy regulation, they will not be able to do so. They will not be able to do so. Because it, 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 there is a difference between what is in... Um, uh, the member says from a secondary position, but I take the intervention. They're in the Good Friday Agreement. Yes, they are in the Good Friday Agreement. But the Good Friday Agreement, of course, goes alongside the membership of the single market. Not everything is in the Good Friday Agreement, and that is the difficulty. So the, the solution to this is single market membership for the whole of the UK. The position the First Minister has then articulated is also in Scotland's place in Europe. If that is not available, then it is, I think, axiomatic that those places which uh, can have a different arrangement should be allowed to do so. And that is the position that we find ourselves in. But single market membership for the whole of the UK would be the way out of this incredible mess that has been created by Theresa May. And I urge it on every member of this chamber. Lewis MacDonald followed by Patrick Harvey. 
what matters here, of course, is to draw the right conclusions from current events. And I hope the Minister will agree that it would be a mistake to use the chaos of Theresa May's failed deal on Northern Ireland yesterday simply to push for a differential deal here too. Is the right conclusion not to say if it's good enough for Northern Ireland, it's good enough for the whole of the UK? If, if the proposals that were floated by Mrs May yesterday were indeed designed to protect jobs and business in Northern Ireland, surely we should seek to do the same in Scotland, in England and in Wales. Yeah. And should achieving that uh, not be the focus of all the efforts of the Scottish Government going forward? Minister. I, I am in the curious position of hearing my own words echoed back in that question. That is precisely what I have just said, that a differentiated deal is at the end of the road. We are forcing uh, the pace by trying to say, let's have a deal for the whole of the UK, and we should do. But it is also wise, and I know the member has urged upon me in the past, the wise to be prepared for any circumstance. I be prepared is the motto of the Boy Scouts. I was never a Boy Scout, but I recognize the motto. We are preparing ourselves. We have to be realistic that if there is not that solution, then there has to be another solution. And that is why this document, and I commend, for example, paragraphs 169 to 171 in those, that regard, we wish to have a UK-wide solution. That is what we, we've said. It's the best thing for Northern Ireland for the rest of us in terms of a membership of the single market and the customs union. If, however, that is ruled out, then it would be wrong to have entirely differentiated solutions in one place and not in another, not least because it would be very damaging to Scotland. The effect of a differentiated solution in one part and not in another could be de deleterious to Scotland. And I'm sure the member would not urge upon this chamber actions that would be damaging to Scotland. But I do agree there should be, the whole of these islands should be in the single market and the customs union. And we urge that upon all, but particularly upon the Labour Party. And I have to say that uh, I think if the Labour Party were to adopt that, to be a standard that it would carry in, in this particular campaign, that would move this on very considerably indeed. And uh, the First Minister made that point in a tweet to Jeremy Corbyn this morning, and I repeat it to Richard Leonard. Patrick Harvey, followed by Willie Rainey. Thank you. It seems to me that those who are angrily asserting the difference between differentiated models between parts of the UK and full UK single market membership are missing the central point that these are now the only two options credible. Uh, last week, the, the Cabinet Secretary spoke at the Finance and Constitution Committee in positive terms about the re-energised uh, process in the Joint Ministerial Committee on European negotiations. Did that meeting of the JMC address specifically the question of to what extent differentiated options are technically achievable? And if it didn't, will he ensure that at next week's meeting of the JMC, uh, that meeting doesn't end without a clear answer of the question? To what extent are differentiated, op di differentiated options on the table, or is UK single, ma single market membership still on the table? Minister. Well, uh, there has not, of course, been a meeting of the JMC since um, I gave evidence to the committee, but uh, there has been a meeting, of course, between John Swinney and myself uh, and Damien Green and, and David Mundell. Uh, and quite clearly, we were looking at the way in which we could take forward the uh, withdrawal bill and the discussions on the withdrawal bill and the frameworks. Now, you know, an hour is a long time in Brexit. That was well before we had this uh, situation with Ireland, uh, which we, at the time, and, and I said in evidence to the committee last week, I thought it was a pending difficulty which was coming out towards us very fast, and it, so it has happened. I cannot imagine going to the JMC next week and not making it crystal clear, as I'm sure my colleague Mark Drakeford in Wales will make it clear too, that what has happened in the last 24 hours has changed things yet again and will require to be addressed very seriously indeed. Uh, in fact, there must be a resolution of this. But I agree with Patrick Harvey that there are only two possible solutions. Uh, one of them is to have the differentiated solution. The better one is to have the solution for the whole of the UK. Anything else will not resolve this issue. And again, I'm grateful for the support that Patrick Harvey has given to this. I urge others to give this support because together I think we can make a substantial difference on this matter. Willie Rennie, followed by Daniel Johnson. Uh, we don't really know what the Conservatives and their DUP allies are doing, but neither does it seem do they. I mean, we've got a mounting set of broken promises uh, on Europe. First of all, the £350 million for the NHS. Now the, the dismissal of any scaremongering, apparently, about the Irish border. So in that context, does the 
Minister not think there's a third option? And that third option should be that the British people should have the final say whether this guddle is appropriate to accept or should it be left to the Conservatives and their DUP allies? Minister. As the, the member knows, uh, I've not, certainly not ruled out supporting that option. Um, I do think that there is a need for people to reflect very seriously upon the changed circumstances in which we are in. Uh, an opinion poll yesterday, as a member will know, showed that in Scotland now a substantially greater majority against Brexit than there was even on the 23rd of June last year. I think there's some indication that that is also happening elsewhere. I quoted on radio this morning the case of Grimsby, a town who voted 70% for leaving, but whose fishing industry is now saying that they do not wish to have the disadvantages of leaving. And people are genuinely seeing what the difficulties are. I'm very struck by the number of people who have commented to me on the difficulties that will be caused by uh, the way in which the uh, competition for the European capital culture has come to an end. So people are seeing the effect of what is taking place and they will wish to reflect upon that. And there may be a number of ways in which they can do so. But the member is also right that the chaos of this is a major factor in people's confidence in politics. And this is something that um, Theresa May needs to reflect on very seriously indeed. There is, there is a weekly, sometimes daily crisis of confidence in the UK government. That cannot be good for the generality of politics. And it would be an example, and I, I say it again, presiding officer, it would be an example if this chamber could come together on the issue of the single market and the customs union and be able to say, we know that that is what we want to get delivered and we'll try and get it delivered. I am still meeting with representatives of the other political parties. I'm glad to do so. And when we meet uh, again, I hope this week, I hope we will reflect upon that because that stance which was taken right across the chamber uh, before and after the referendum is something that could unite us in a clear view of what should happen now. And people are looking for that clear view of what should happen now, because all they are getting is chaos and confusion from elsewhere. Uh, Daniel Johnson, followed by Anna Sarwar. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the Minister has a number of occasions through this session uh, stated his uh, uh, position that a uh, differentiated settlement is one option further down the line. But what assessment has the Scottish Government made of the economic, economic impact of Scotland having uh, a, 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 a ceasing to have regulatory alignment with the rest of the UK? Minister. Well, it is quite obvious that we have uh, assessed what the difficulties are of ceasing to have regulatory requirement uh, with the EU. Uh, we are in a position where our own paper and future papers have reflected upon all the issues. But I'd ask the member to think about this. I have made it absolutely clear that the best solution is to have regulatory alignment across these islands. That is the work that we've been trying to achieve. That is the position that we laid out. And we are grateful to the, for the support of the Labour Party frequently on the issues of the single market in this chamber. So if we were to focus on what might uh, unite us going forward to achieve that, we would probably achieve more than focusing on what divides us. So here's an opportunity for the chamber to actually achieve something. And I hope we could do it together. Anna Sarwar. Does the Minister accept that there is a credible alternative to the Tory Brexit shambles, that one respects the result of the referendum, secondly resolves the issue between the Northern Ireland and Republic of Ireland border issue, it challenges the economic deficit that will come from Brexit and also stops further austerity and that is supporting permanent membership of the single market and the customs union for the entire UK and not only that that there is actually a natural majority across the UK for permanent membership of the single market and the customs union too. Well, we, we could Minister. find ways to disagree, but I'm not going to disagree with you. That is absolutely what should take place. I have described, I've described the single market solution as not transition, but destination. I think that would be another way of putting what the member has just put to me, uh, and that is available to us. Um, I think it is quite clear that if the UK was to say, contrary to completely erroneous information given by David Jones this morning on a television programme I was on with him, it is perfectly possible for the UK to say, uh, we now see that we wish the best result would be for us to stay in the single market and the customs union. There is a mechanism so to do through EFTA and EEA membership. I am absolutely sure a way could be found to do that. And that would solve it. It would also create the circumstances, presiding officer, in which the negotiations become much clearer and much easier. Because the negotiations then are about a single market solution. A single market minus solution, perhaps, but a single market solution. And that lays a completely clear path out 
So I, I'm not going to disagree with Anna Sarwar almost uniquely. I'm not going to agree with Dan disagree with Daniel Johnson. I'm not going to disagree uh, with Mr. MacDonald. We are as one on that, and I'm very glad that we could unite on that issue of single market membership. Thank you. That concludes the urgent question. We move on to the next item of business, which is topical questions. I'm going to 